Hi guys, welcome back to At Home with Holly. My name's Holly and I'm so glad that you're here with me today. Um, today we have a very big fun project. Um, and in that fun project, we are going to be putting together um, a green stock. They came out with a brand new pink green stock with the basket weave and I have all of the strawberries that we took from um, this chicken, the bed that's right next to the chicken coop and I wanted to be able to have my perennial strawberries inside, well all strawberries are perennial, I'm, I wanted to have my strawberries <laughs> since it's a perennial inside the green stock and I just love that because then they'll be up off the ground, um, easier for me to snack on and I just think strawberries go really well in there. Um, I did do a little bit of work um, this past few days on the chicken coop so I do want to take you guys back with me and show you what happened but um so I took all the walls off my chicken coop we together put up walls and installed water heaters um for my chickens during the winter and it is beautiful out and sunny and warm and so they no longer needed them so I went ahead and took off all the walls I'm going to show you guys that process I took them off numbered them cleaned them off and then I have them stacked and ready to go for next winter in my garage so while I go ahead and get my box of my green stock outside and ready to fill with the bags of potting soil that we have. Um, I'm going to take you guys back to the project of me taking the walls off the chicken coop and then we will meet back together and get our green stock filled and planted. I'm so excited that you're here. Let's get going. So the solid walls on, solid wall panels on my chicken coop was, I think, besides initially installing this chicken coop it was one of the best decisions I have made in my chicken keeping um, journey you know so we have uh, the the hardware cloth I have the hardware cloth that is completely surrounding this chicken coop so that it's fully secure in that way but it is an open air open sided coop um, which is awesome for airflow and ventilation and deciding to put those um, those walls up just was such a nice wind break for the chickens um, so that they didn't have the the freezing you know negative temperatures blowing right in at them um, when the sun came out it warmed it up a few degrees in there and they were not easy to install but it wasn't the hardest project I've ever done but uninstalling them is that the right way to say it Un yes taking it removing them being able to number them with a permanent marker um, just unscrew the little screws and number them so that I know which order to put them back up since we like custom cut them to fit around the roosts and things and then being able to spray them off was just honestly enjoyable and then also it was super satisfying to be able to take the hose in there and spray everything down since it was so um you know, not able, it was just got so dusty in there over the winter. It got so dusty in there over the winter, which I was fine with because I would rather have it be a little dusty and have my chickens not have Arctic blasts <laughs> directly on them. Um, but it was so satisfying to be able to get in there with a hose and just spray all the dust off. I mean, it was so satisfying because the white was actually white again <laughs> with the chicken coop. And I took a minute to spray off the, the little ramp and all that stuff. My chickens were not thrilled that I was in there spraying stuff off, but I think they were super thrilled that the walls came off. So, and then I just took a minute to just, I just sprayed them down and the, everything came off so easily. Um, that honestly, I know that you can get more rigid, look how satisfying this is. I know you can get more rigid, you know, polycarbonate, you know, you can get fancier ways um, to enclose your coop, but I wasn't trying to fully enclose it. I was just trying to make like a little wind house and sorry, a little wind break. And if there was a bonus of it feeling like a little bit of a greenhouse over the really, really, really cold days of winter, I was okay with that as well. But it still did have um, the ability to get fresh air in there that wasn't completely enclosed, but it was just a nice little, nice little perk for my girls because um, I love them. They are my you know, my little hard workers <laughs> in the garden. They make compost for me. They eat all the scraps. They eat the weeds um, and they give us eggs. So I wanted to make sure that I take care of them the best that I can. So anyway, these are all rinsed off, stacked nicely in my garage and numbered. So like I said, they're going to be, um, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll find that out. But I think having numbered them and um, put them away in a certain bit of order, I do think that reattaching them um, this coming winter 2024 to 25 winter i think will be a lot easier than the first time where we had to custom cut each piece 
to fit around the chicken coop. That's my hope anyway. <laughs> That's my hope and a girl can dream. So we got all these sprayed off and then the next day I was able to actually install the, um, the brassica cages and then we are going to to go ahead and fast forward to um, current present day where you and I are going to be installing the green stock together. A little windy, but we'll do our best. A little freebie of that. So I did get the automatic water and system, but I'm not going to attach that today. All right, stick these wheels in. So I love the idea of vertical gardening. Um, I love having the cattle panel trellises in my garden and I love just making smart use of space. And the great thing about green stocks is no matter where you live, you're able to um, grow so much food in such a small space with these green stocks. And they're really well made, made in the USA and all that stuff. And then when they came out with the pink one, you know, <laughs> I just couldn't help it. I had to go ahead and get that. So I did get the pink leaf basket weave with a spinner and roller. And then later on, we'll attach the irrigation system as well. Okay, this part, not really necessary, but I saw Laura on Garden Answer do it. And she just put a little piece of, you know, like painter's tape or masking tape or whatever on top of the hole so that when you fill it with soil, you don't have to worry about it getting in there. I'm not super worried about it either way, but. Okay, so I did put the little pieces of tape over the holes. I don't know that that was, like I said, completely necessary, but I can appreciate that it did keep it a little bit cleaner so I didn't have um, dirt that fell all, soil that fell all the way down to the bottom um, spinner. It's really important when you're filling your green stalks to fill them up with quality potting soil and also to fill them all the way up to the top because soil settles, especially after you water it in and just, I don't know, I feel like every time you plant something, soil just evaporates or something. I know that's not true, but it does um, somehow mysteriously need topped off frequently. So filling it up to the tippity tippity top was super important. I overstuffed these things and still when I watered it in, it did settle down quite a bit. So they're not kidding. Fill it up to the top. I um, had eight bags of potting soil ready, um, and I only used um, seven, not just short, just short of seven. I actually used like six and a half um, to fill up this green stock. Green stock does have several different colors and several different um, varieties, and they have, you know, lots of accessories you can add on to grow larger things like cabbages and you know, they have all kinds of cool accessories and stuff, but I just wanted to get just one so I could grow my strawberries in. And then I saw the pink and, you know, I just had to get it. But I will leave a link below if you want $10 off that you can stack with any other code that you may have um, for green stocks if you're interested in one as well. There's a referral code that I'll link down below. So super excited to have this pretty pink vertical feature <laughs> in my garden to be able to snack on. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish filling up all of these levels and then we will get it stacked and filled with strawberries. Each level has um, the actual tray that has the soil and then there's a drip tray that sits right on top of it and then you stack the next level of the um, big pink tray and then a little gray watering tray inside of it and you just keep layering it like a lasagna till you get it all the way filled to the top and then the tippity top has a water reservoir and that reservoir is how you water it. You fill up the top reservoir and it trickles all the way down. Really cool. 
So here we are, this is the best part when you get to put the strawberry plants in. So these are the strawberry plants that I took from a bed and they were needing a home. And so I'm super excited that they finally get to end up in this pretty pink green stock so we can have easy strawberry snacks. So the top reservoir on the green stock is really awesome because it um, drips down through every single layer so that all of the layers get watered really evenly. So um, that is how you water it every time you're going to water it routinely. But on this day, I decided to fill up the reservoir and water each individual pocket just to make sure that those strawberries got watered in really well. I had kind of neglected them in their little <laughs> in their little cell tray and barely even watered them. So they were, you know, they were very happy to get in this green stock. We'll put it that way. So on this day, I did go ahead and water them in super well, watering every pocket and watering the top reservoir. And I did that until it made it all the way down to the bottom drain, which actually drains. There's a little clear plastic tube. The water drains out the side. And that's how you know <laughs> that you have gotten water all the way to the bottom. Okay. All good. And since we're out here, might as well do some hanging pots. We'll do some hanging baskets. These are so stressed. Let's see if they can bounce back. If not, there's no rule saying I can't go pick up some new petunias. Okay, so the first one I put in was some kind of trailing thing. And then I put in the petunias that we started together in here. This is another of the petunias that we started together. This one's the balcony mix. All right, this is the triumph mix. We'll see if these bounce back over the next couple weeks. And if not, we'll swap them out for something different. Let's do a little sneak peek of what's going on in the garden before we say goodbye for today. So we have the potatoes that we planted together. They're growing. Try to block the wind. We have Olivia's bed. So we have some marigolds that she started, some lettuce on this trellis. She planted some Malabar spinach along there and that's climbing. And then we have birdhouse gourds over there as well and they're going to be climbing. And then we have asters and cosmos and zinnias and a few green beans and all the things that Olivia wanted. We have our brassicas. I planted some straw flowers, some zinnias, garlic's doing good. Carrots are coming up all along the middle. Same thing in this bed. Carrots are coming up in the middle. All of our stuff being hardened off. <laughs> Shallots and herbs and brassicas. Some rude beckias. Our onions and celery. We have eaten our wheat and asparagus. <laughs> and the strawberries are doing great. And the onions. And of course the berries on the other side are doing great as well. 
Sorry for the wind. I'm going to choose a non-windy day and we'll try to do a complete garden tour together so you guys can see where we're at. And of course, we're going to plant our tomatoes and peppers together as well. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate all the likes and the comments and the shares. Can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.